Hi everybody, John Meyer here, and we're at the FinOps Org Foundation or event. And who am I speaking with? Uh, JR Storman, Executive Director of the FinOps Foundation. Yeah, Mike Fuller, the CTO of the FinOps Foundation. JR, this is huge. You're having an event happening, but I want to talk more about what is FinOps. What is FinOps? That's a really We only have like a couple minutes, by the way. So we're actually in the process of redefining what FinOps is. And this morning here at this conference, we actually have our technical advisory council, a portion of it coming together to talk about that because FinOps is, is evolving. Um, at its core, we're seeing a synonymization, if I can use that word of, you know, here at the AWS conference, things like cloud financial management with FinOps um, in the industry around how do we integrate FinOps with other types of disciplines out there. But at the core, FinOps is really about getting the most value out of the cloud spend. What I always like to say, though, it is not really a technology discipline. It's a cultural practice. And it's about getting finance with engineering, with procurement, business leaders together to align around the relevant cloud data to make better decisions, to get the most out of their cloud so they can drive better unit economics, more velocity, better decision making, and, and ultimately grow efficiently in cloud. FinOps is this cultural practice that happens within the organizations. It is uh, how people work together around understanding their use of cloud and the value it's getting to the business. The value that it's getting to the business, what is the business value of utilizing the FinOps culture? So the, the point is, is that if you understand where you're spending your money and what, what business impact that that money is having on the business. So, uh, you know, you've got your engineers making decisions on, on the cloud choices and architecting to use the cloud in ways that is best for, the, for their services. And so you're like, what is that service actually giving the business? How is that working? And then what are those trade-offs they're making? How good, fast and cheap, you know, uh, the, the balance of those things. And it should be done in a way that the, the organization is aware of that value they're getting and aware of the cost decisions that are being made as they're architecting and engineering for cloud. So JR, recently at least the top hyperscalers have joined the FinOps Foundation. What's your feelings on that? We're finally at this place. We've got AWS, Microsoft, Google, Oracle coming together at the table, which is really exciting because the practitioners now we're seeing at large organizations and just those who are generally using it on the cloud really have entered this multi-cloud world. Uh, and to have the vendors together coordinating to make sure that they are providing the right resources to the customers is really exciting. Um, we as a foundation now get to move out of, hey, we're, we're just going to talk about FinOps as an abstract concept at the organizational layer into, let's talk about how to do it really well on AWS at the AWS events. Let's talk about how to do it well on Google, on Microsoft, et cetera. Uh, so for us, it's it's a great maturation. And we always knew, sort of knew it was coming. It took three or four years to get everybody on the same page, but because we as an organization are all about advancing the practitioner and the standards and definitions of FinOps. Having all these cloud providers at the same table means that we can now have the more intimate debate about what is FinOps, as you asked, and how the practitioners should work and make sure we're all swimming in the same direction. What's your feelings now that all hyperscalers are now part of the FinOps Foundation? Uh, it's where we, what we need to be is where we've been obviously trying to get to. Uh, because it just means that there's a, a common voice about what is that practice that, that you know, organizations need to have in order to utilize cloud in a way that is cost aware and done in a way that is uh, efficient for the business. That, uh, you know, we, we're not trying to have different names for the same thing. We, we've got a single sort of definition of the, the, sort of the practice itself and we can sort of drive forward the careers of those who are actually doing this at businesses, at organizations out there. JR, you and I were on a podcast before FinOps X, and we were talking about AWS joining, and I predicted by reInvent they would be part of it or announce it at reInvent. Would you call my prediction kind of semi-true? Uh, I'd like to thank John Meyer for making sure that AWS joined the FinOps Foundation. I had no part in that. You, you, did, you did call it, yeah. And I, and I think I probably said something cagey at the time because, uh, you know, these things take a long time. We've been in, yeah. Been that in is very true. Long time. Um, I think you know AWS is showing up um, as the last cloud provider to join, uh, but I would say we're seeing them engage in all the right ways. Um, the product organization, uh, the AWS Insights organization that has Cost Explorer and Curr and Compute Optimizer uh, is leading the engagement with the FinOps Foundation as we're seeing with Microsoft and Google and others, the product teams, which is who we want in here, right? The people delivering the products the customers are using. At the same time, AWS is also bringing in uh, the optics team, which works with their customers on optimization. We've got global cloud financial management teams, we've got cloud economic teams, we've got enablement teams, and they're really all coming in to try and help work with us to normalize the conversation around how to do FinOps well. Um, I, I actually, it was very exciting. 
the day they signed, the first time I had an AWS conversation, an AWS person gave me an AWS water bottle that said FinOps on it. And I was like, okay, finally, we're all here. They already planned. Yeah, no, so it's, it's been great to get them involved. And I think, you know, they've been they've been hungry to, to plug in for a long time. And the field teams and the product teams, services teams are all coming together. We're going to have a lot of them here at the event today working with the customers and really rolling up sleeves to, you know, help them do better in cloud. What is Focus? Yeah, so Focus is a definition of a specification for the data that comes in for cloud billing. And so, you know, the each of the cloud providers have their own sort of uh, provider specific data sets, uh, which describe, you know, in great detail your cloud billing. Uh, but it's sort of in order for someone to understand that, you need to become a billing data expert. And, you know, for organizations that have multiple providers, this becomes trying to find someone who understands not just one provider's worth of data, but two. And then when it comes to FinOps challenges, you're kind of figuring out how do I get this data in a shape that actually answers the question I have. And so what Focus does is it, it gets us to a point where there's a, spe a single specification for the data shape should look like and puts it in a, in a position where we have the FinOps use case and the actual way to solve it using that data specification. Now that all the hyperscalers are on the table, there's actually focus that we should talk about where everybody's trying to have a common language, right? A common schema for their curve file. Can you talk us about focus? Yeah, so focus is the FinOps open cost and usage specification. It's not a standard necessarily. It's a specification that helps cloud providers and anybody who is putting out consumable variable cloud-like spin data, provide that data in a format that makes it easily ingestible into a FinOps practice and normalizes the terminology between clouds. And also, as we go forward, allowing SaaS providers to provide FinOps-friendly data or platform providers or variable consumption licensing. There are some who are talking about, could we even apply to hybrid? We'll see where it goes, but Focus is open source spec that currently has, I think it's about a hundred organizations contributing to it. All four of the clouds, a lot of the large cloud consumers, folks like Capital One, Walmart, Meta are involved. Uh, most of the GSIs, the Accenture's, Deloitte's, uh, EYs are plugging in. And the great thing is they're all working in the same area, but they've been doing it in silos. You know, this cloud working with this GSI with this company or this company with this other company. And we have conversations with them about describing their cloud spin, they all use different terms and go between two clouds. They may have completely different concepts or terms for the same concept. You know, on AWS, you've got a linked account. On Google, you've got projects and folders. On, on Microsoft, you've got subscriptions and resource groups. We're providing normalization layers so that not only is an individual company able to report better and get more trust in the data, it's really providing talent portability. If you work at company A and you've learned how to report on cloud, you can then move to company B and go get a different job and still be able to do the same thing. Or if you work on company A in this cloud, you can now add another cloud and not have to reinvent the wheel with all the lexicon. So it's really about taking out all of the debate and confusion that people have around the data, the taxonomy, the terms, normalizing that so people can do cloud faster and better. I think it's going to make it easier, not only in the financial people of understanding the terms and going from, uh, you know, company to company or engineers, right? And it's going to be making it easier for them to understand, you know, what one term means in one cloud versus the other. It all means this, you know, we're kind of coming all to the table to help each other out. Well, the engineering side is particularly, I think, relevant because uh, in my experience of about 12 years in this space, so many times you put spin data in front of an engineer and you get one of two responses. One is either, I have too many things on my plate to think about cost, or the other is, that's not my spin. That's not what I understand the spin to be. And that, that second one, even within just AWS, there are so many different ways to report on cost. A dollar is not a dollar. You've got amortized, not amortized. You've got blended, unblended. If you have your discounted rates or not discounted rates, you've got your savings plan, it's not. A lot of what Focus does is help to define what are the metrics you should, even just within AWS, use and provide a normalized language to that, but then say, okay, how does that apply to Google, Microsoft, or even to your SaaS spending down the road? And so that helps when the finance people, the FinApps, or the business people are trying to interact with the engineers and vice versa to agree, this is what we're talking about when we talk about cloud spin. Because the, the metric on AWS spin that's on the invoice is a different metric than shows up in Cost Explorer or the Cur. And so normalizing that, even with one cloud provider, is really important to get the engineers to say, yes, that is my data. I can own that. Now I want to go and optimize that and make better decisions about it. FinOps has taken off recently in the, actually the last year or even two. And before that, it was known, but it wasn't widely adopted. Why do you think it's being widely adopted now? I think it's a combination of, of the scale that cloud has gotten to. Like, you know, we've, we've you know, for the, all of us that have been around cloud for long enough, you can sort of see it growing and growing and building every year. And you know, there's more organizations turning up to, a, to big events. And we see that, uh, you know, 
So the, the adoption for organizations into cloud, it's getting to the point where the dollars that, that get associated to cloud spend are becoming very material. Um, you know, we've had some eco economic headwinds in the recent sort of, you know, well, couple of years now, uh, which then means that organizations are starting to think about, like, are they putting their, their dollars in the right areas? Um, and then um, just the fact that there's awareness is sort of hitting a tipping point where people now know that there is a practice called FinOps, there is a need to have that within their organization for, for efficient cloud spend. And so sort of, you know, they're all sort of coming together, converging on a point where now organizations are, are thinking about FinOps as they start their journey towards cloud, instead of waiting till they have any sort of problems with cloud spend in order to sort of retrospectively fix it up after the, uh, afterwards. Talk to me about the Kudos dashboard, the Cloud Intelligence Dashboards by AWS. Yeah, the Cloud Intelligence Dashboards, which started as Kudos, uh, have been popping up in our annual surveys from the beginning as one of the most used uh, visibility toolings out there that are, I don't know if they're officially open source, but they're they're free to use as part of for AWS users. Um, but they provide a nice view into interrogating, reporting on your cloud spend data. Um, we're really excited about Kudos has been, I think, in a lot of ways, a Skunk Works project in AWS for a long time, and it's starting to have uh, some new releases that came out. Uh, there's now integration, I know, from the Cur to QuickSight to create some of the dashboarding that, that Kudos historically has has worked on. Uh, and we're seeing Kudos as the core entity now have focused categories in it: the FinOps, Open Cost, and Usage Specification. So uh, Yuri, who's uh, one of the architects of Kudos, is a TAM at AWS, uh, was the first person from AWS to sign uh, up for the Focus project. And he's uh, already been a heavy contributor to help make sure that we are aligning the spend. And then he's bringing that back into Kudos, which is really cool. Um, we see Kudos as a great way for you know, companies to get a customized view of their spend. And sometimes they're looking at the cloud native tooling, Cost Explorer, sometimes they might be using a platform. Um, Kudos is another way to look at that in a way that is like native via QuickSight. Um, and so, yeah, excited to have that there. A lot of those folks are gonna be here at our events today. And I think it's a, it's a great example of the cloud providers doing kind of a crawl, walk, run approach to integrating Focus. Uh, we, we just saw Microsoft uh, launched uh, an export of Focus in their latest updates that you can do uh, you know, we're seeing Google and some of the providers start to bring these FinOps concepts into some of their features. And AWS is starting with Kudos, and then we're hoping to see over time uh, the Focus concepts make their way into native billing exports as well. Mike, real quick, can you talk to me about the Kudos dashboards, the cloud intelligent dashboards? Yeah, so the, you know, the, the team at the AWS have built those, have you know, been working on them for a few years now, and they're super valuable for, for the AWS customer to have those dashboards and get, you know, sort of a high level view and detailed view of certain uh, FinOps questions and challenges that, you know, having it nicely laid out. So to see that adoption of recent uh, focus categories into those uh, dashboards is really great. It sort of sees, shows the, the direction that we're heading with, uh, you know, those those terms starting to turn up and the, the way those measurements are happening. And so it just means that, uh, you know, we get to a point where the, the terminology, that common language that's happening within the dashboards that's being used across the business is, uh, you know, becomes more uniform and uh, it gets it gets everyone sort of like already halfway up the ladder when you start with the dashboards that are you know unified and people understand them and there's uh, a lot of people out there you know using the same dashboards so mike what's next for the finops foundation for 2024 currently working with our technical advisory council on a refresh of our finops framework make it uh, you know more clearer more simplified so that it's easier for a finops adoption in inside the organ organizations and uh, make some more room for some uh, more more areas that FinOps can sort of head into and you know the the common topics that we hear around sustainability and AIML and so there's some hot topics there that we feel like we need to make some room for in you know practices that are starting to move into those areas and so yeah so a really good refresh of some of the content make it easier for everybody and uh, and we'll see, we'll see where, we, where FinOps is at the end of next year. I like it that it's ever changing and evolving. It's not static in one place that you guys are always taking into consideration. And just like the FinOps, you know, implementing the culture, it's not a once and done task. Yeah, that's it. It's like the value in this is that is it's solving actual business problems. And so if you're not continuing to evolve to what the current actual business problem is, then it's a it's an old framework that used to work. Uh, so, the, you know, we have to keep keep up with what's happening today. Mike, what's your biggest prediction for FinOps and cost optimization for 2024? I think we're going to get a lot more clarity now you know we're getting alignment on uh you know the, we've got the, the big vendors like we just talked about in uh the mix uh focus bringing together sort of this this uh unification of the the billing data itself and then um you know a, a lot of a, a wider spread adoption of finops across organizations so there's just as you turn up to events and you, you talk to others in the industry there's going to be less of this uh let me explain to you what finops is and more about like 
what are you doing to get the best out of FinOps and ha what tools are you using and what, what practices are you doing inside your organization? So we just get to that point where we're over the hump of explaining what it is and why it is and just starting to get like, how are we doing it better and how can we you know, move forward to be even better than we were last year. All right, JR, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, John. It was a pleasure. Have a good one. Thanks. Mike, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Cheers.